Hello, everyone. My name is India Williams, and I am the product services trainer here at Eye Contact, and I'll be your moderator today. I'd like to start by saying welcome and thank you for joining us in our thought leadership webinar. Today's title is Marketing in 2016, Hitching a Ride Ahead of the Curve with John W. Hayes, Content Strategist. Before we get started, I would like to just briefly go over a few housekeeping items. First of all, if you should have any audio issues during the presentation, let us know by typing a message into the chat box. Also, if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat box as well and they will be addressed during Q&A in the order in which they were received. If you want the recording, we'll be sending a link to everyone's email address within two to three business days. So be on the lookout for that email. I'd like to now present to you John W. Hayes. As I mentioned, John is a content strategist, and he has 20 years of online marketing experience. John Hayes works with Eye Contact as a marketing strategist and contributing author. John is the author of four books, and he's a popular speaker at events where he demonstrates how organizations of all sizes can maximize their potential from email, social media, and content marketing-led strategies. So without any further ado, I will go ahead and present to you John Hayes. Enjoy the presentation. Thank you very much, India. Um, as um, India mentioned, my name is John Hayes, and I am a um, marketing strategist here at um, I Contact Email Marketing. What does that mean? Well, what is a marketing strategist? Well, I, I believe I've got the best job in the world because I get to spend uh, my days speaking with marketeers um, like you, marketeers from organizations and businesses um, of all shapes and sizes. Um, I get to know what makes you tick and I also get to know perhaps more importantly what your problems are because I believe if I can help you address your problems and I can give you a solution um, and I can share that with other people whether it's via the um, eye contact blog um, where you may recognize my name from or from the seminars I speak at or webinars um, like this we solve a problem for one person you can solve a problem for 10 people a hundred people a thousand people um, and so on so I love um, hearing about your marketing problems and there'll be plenty of opportunity at the end of today's webinar for you to share your marketing problems um, in the Q&A. Now, if I can't give you an answer straight away, um, there will be somebody within the organization I can go to and we'll get back to you um, within the next couple of days with an email. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box uh, on the, the control panel on your screen and we'll get to that at the end of the session. Um, my contact details are also on the screen. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with me um, to ask any questions, you can find me on Twitter at John underscore W underscore Hayes or drop me an email, jhayes at icontact.com. I'm going to run briefly through um, a quick agenda before we get started um, today. So during this webinar, you will learn leading edge strategies for success with mobile. Now, be prepared. I'm going to talk about mobile a lot. 2016 is the year the mobile um, eclipses everything else online. So if you're burying your head in the sand and you're not developing a mobile strategy, now's the time to give yourself a shake and wake up to mobile. We're going to be looking at how to build reputation and drive demand using platforms like Periscope. Periscope is the... Um, the, the broadcast channel from um, Twitter, live video broadcast. But we're also going to be looking at perhaps more traditional content marketing platforms as well, things like you know, your corporate blog. We're going to look at how to target messages and audiences using marketing automation. Marketing automation is something we are very, very excited about here at iContact. Um, towards the end of last year, we launched our iContact Pro product, which is um, we believe um, something that's going to completely disrupt the marketing automation um, landscape. You know, we have um, a great solid product which is um, making marketing automation available for the first time ever to small and medium sized um, businesses. Then we're going to look at how technology disrupts the marketplace in a good way. Um, 
my background um, before I started working in online marketing was in the newspaper industry and 20 years ago I saw how technology was disrupting the newspaper industry and any business you can possibly think of stands to be disrupted if you think how um, technology has disrupted the travel industry or in latter years how um, a mobile app has disrupted um, a business like you know, the taxi business. Who'd have thought the taxi industry could have been disrupted by technology? Um, we're going to talk about disruption and you know, how you can be the disruptor rather than the um, disrupted. And then finally, we're going to be talking um, about why best um, practices are still very important. You can't ignore the best practices when it comes to things like email marketing, social media marketing, and content marketing. Now, at this time of the year, um, the beginning of the year, I'm, people like myself are, are often asked um, about my predictions for the, the year ahead. And we have a crystal ball on the screen there, and um, I don't really like that because yeah, I'm not a soothsayer, I, I, I'm not a fortune teller. So when we predict the future, we tend to um, speak to our, to our clients and our, and our wider community, and we tend to predict what will change based on, um, on on what our customers are actually seeing. So in 2016, we believe that marketing will become more mobile. There's that word again. It will become more personal as we're targeting the right people with the right message at the right time. It will become immediate, meaning messages will be sent you know, at the right time when people are engaged with your, um, with, with your website, people are engaged with your brand and they want to buy. Um, it will become smarter. We use the word smarter a lot when we're talking about uh, our eye contact pro product. It will become disruptive. We've already talked about how mobile apps like Uber are disrupting um, the market. And it will become noisier. What do I mean by noisier? Well, everybody has the opportunity to reach um, a wide audience now via the web and, and mobile devices. So everyone and his dog is, is, is trying to get their message out there. So the marketing landscape is getting very, very noisy and you need to understand that if you want to be heard above the noise with solid marketing communications. Um, while we're looking forward, um, it's also worthwhile looking back as well because although there were lots of things changing, lots of things will also stay the same. And we believe that email marketing will still rule the roost in 2016. Email marketing has been around for a hell of a long time. It's been around since around 1976. It actually predates the internet as most of us know it. And it still delivers the highest return on investment um, of any other form of marketing available to today's entrepreneur. 44 to 1, so for every dollar, pound or euro you spend on email marketing, if you're following best practices, you should expect to see $44, pounds or euros in return. The reason for that, it is um, because it's built on permission. Your subscribers have actually, actively given you permission to um, contact them. It's also a, a retention marketing tool via an, via an, uh, versus an acquisition marketing tool. And as anyone that's been in business for any length of time will tell you, it is much more cost effective to retain an existing client than to acquire um, a new one. I personally believe that email marketing is the profitable component of absolutely everything else you do to market your business. So if you're spending money on paid search, if you're spending money on newspaper advertising, if you're spending money on radio advertising, you always need to factor in email marketing so that you can see a return on those expensively acquired customers. And again, um, it's enhanced by social uh, media uh, and mobile and automation. Um, nothing kills email marketing. A few years ago, we were told that social media would um, completely kill email. Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook said you know, email was essentially dead. It hasn't happened. Social media has strengthened email marketing. Similarly with mobile, mobile has freed email marketing from the constraints of the desktop device. People now carry their um, email inbox around with them everywhere and engage constantly. We'll look at some good figures um, about that later um, in the presentation. And in automation, it just makes it smarter. It helps you deliver the right message at the right time to the right people, um, you know, driving um, far better conversions. So best practices never go out of fashion. So never ever forget this. Your content must always be engaging, relevant, and timely. It doesn't matter what platform you're, you're sending out on, whether it's your blog, whether it's your email, whether it's your social media, the moment your content is no longer engaging, 
relevant and timely, it's as good as spam and your subscribers or your viewers, they will turn off and they will walk away and you will find it increasingly difficult to win them back. Um, testing will always increase effectiveness. Um, you might think your campaigns are doing very, very well, but if you don't test new strategies, um, you test your subject lines, your calls to action, um, your, your copy length, whether it's text versus um, images, etc., etc., how will you know that you can't do better? And um, I still meet you know, many, many email marketers who um, you know, carry on doing the thing they've always done, and that perhaps is one of the most dangerous things you can do in marketing. We always need to be testing and trying new strategies and approaches um, so that we can improve our open rates, improve our click-through rates, improve our conversions. Um, we've got to keep our lists um, nice and clean um, to drive growth. Now, um, most people don't realize, but the average age of an email address is approximately 18 months. This um, essentially means um, you know, a year and a half into, in, into a campaign, a lot of your email addresses are no longer relevant and will not drive you any traffic or try to generate any sales for you. So you've got to keep your lists nice and clean um, and you've got to drive growth. So you've constantly got to be adding new email addresses to your lists. You've got to keep one eye on the future because as I say, things are changing very, very quickly, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, you might be excited about a new marketing medium. You might be excited about something new on social media. You might be excited about your corporate blog, but don't forget what makes you money. And at the moment, that is still email marketing. So keep one eye on the future, but don't throw the baby out with um, the, the bathwater. So moving on, um, we are going to look at our first section today, um, which is mobile marketing um, in 2016. As I say, I will be talking a lot about mobile marketing throughout this presentation. And if you're not currently investing um, in your future in, via mobile devices, you really need to take your head out of the sand and um, start looking at mobile because it changes everything. I like to say the future's here and, and it's mobile and you know, there's a number of reasons for that. Obviously mobile frees email and social media from the constraints of desktop devices. Um, mobile makes marketing more personal. What do I mean by that? Well, people are very, very attached to their mobile devices. So when you're contacting them via mobile, um, yeah, your message is very, very personal. It's perhaps one of the reasons why I don't like SMS marketing because I feel it, it's too personal. But at least if you go through social media or go through um, your email inbox, there is um, that, that, it, it's something that people are more more useful used to. Mobile devices um, engage subscribers 365 days of the year, 24 hours um, a day, seven days a week. Um, that means you can target people when they are in the best position to make um, a buying decision. So. You know that could be um, that could be during the holidays when people are hanging out with them um, with, with with their friends and their family. It could be at the weekend when people are out shopping, looking to make buying decisions. It could be in the evening after they've um, they've left work and they're you know, sat, sat in front of the television, perhaps um, surfing the web on on their tablet or, or or their iPhone. There is never a bad time to send um, to mobile devices now. So. In 2016, I want you to make um, email. I want you to make mobile your number one priority. And just a brief look at some of the stats um, relating to um, mobile and and, and email. Um, we're now seeing that 66% of all emails are first opened on a mobile device. Now, this is really really important. If your emails are not mobile friendly. Um, you know, you really stand um, a, a real risk of, of, of losing these subscribers because, you know, they're going to open them on the mobile device, they're not going to be able to um, read them or engage with them, and they're not going to go back and look at your email when they get in front of a desktop because, you know, you've moved on. Similarly, you um, also need to make sure that your website is mobile friendly as well. If people are opening emails on a mobile device, um, they want to then be able to jump to your website and engage with that website on a mobile device as well. So it's not enough just to make sure your emails are mobile responsive. Your website also needs to work um, in the, the mobile environment. Nearly two-thirds of Americans own smartphones now. Um, 
the smartphone is a fantastic way to get hold of people. A couple of months ago, I was um, speaking at a presentation, and I met a lady who worked um, in the charity section sector, and she worked primarily with homeless people um, in, um, in in the northeast of England, um, where, where actually I'm based. And um, she told me that um, they had used email marketing and social media marketing to target um, subscribers who supported the charity. But in recent months, they'd realized that a lot of the people they were also helping as well, the people on the streets, also had mobile devices. You know, they perhaps didn't have a place to live. They perhaps, you know, struggled financially, but they kept their mobile device. They wouldn't have... Um, they wouldn't have credit on their phones um, to, to speak, but you know they could um, log on to, to free Wi-Fi wi zones and get their email and get their social media. So it's amazing who you can reach if you're targeting people via your smartphones. Um, 2016, there will be 162.7 million tablet users um, in the US. So this is only going to grow. People are you're moving towards mobile devices, cell phones, um, tablet devices, and moving away from the traditional desktop devices. So mobile changes everything, and you really need to be prepared for it. Um, people are also spending more time on um, on the internet on mobile devices. 51% of all time spent online is now on mobile, compared to 42% on um, traditional desktop devices. So again, if you're looking to target people and you're looking to convert people and generate um, new registrations, new subscriptions, new sales, you really need to think um, about mobile. And perhaps, um, yeah, perhaps a bit of a frightening stat here, and I know, yeah, this is very true for, for, for me. 65% um, of US smartphone users check their phones within 15 minutes of rising in the morning. And they also check their phones within 15 minutes of going to bed. So they are constantly engaged. And I know myself, I check uh, my email. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I check it. Perhaps I've got a little bit of a problem there and um, need to sort that out. But people are constantly engaged first thing in the morning and last thing at night. So there was never a bad time um, to be sending emails now. And mobile, of course, is rapidly evolving um, itself. Um, we're seeing more wearables, um, the um, Apple um, iPhone, uh, the um, iWatch, um, and certain Android devices as well. We're seeing um, new apps coming into the market, things like Periscope and, and Meerkat, the, um, the online broadcasting tools. Um, and you know, apps continue to disrupt you know, once seen a seemingly impenetrable markets as well. And again, I, I talk about Uber. Who would have thought a business like the taxi industry would have been disrupted by mobile technology? Um, Uber is sweeping the globe now, and um, it really is you know, disrupting a market that you know, a few years ago we thought would never be disrupted. So, I'm going to give you a quick checklist um, for your mobile strategy for 2016. Um, first and foremost, you need to check your email templates. You need to check your emails are working um, across multiple mobile devices. And perhaps the best way of doing that is to uh, register with a service called Litmus. Uh, and they let you view your email campaigns um, across multiple mobile um, devices. As well as checking your email templates, you also need to check your web design as well. There is very little point in spending time, effort, and money on driving people via mobile devices to your website um, if, your, if, if your website doesn't work in the mobile environment. So also get that checked. Um, and if it doesn't work, it's time to speak to your, your web designer and start having uh, mobile responsive pages um, built. You need to optimize your subject lines. Um, in the mobile environment, your subject lines are more important than ever. More often than not, that is all you will see um, when you receive an email via a mobile device. So you need to test your subject lines and constantly strive to improve them. Testing is easy. You take 10% of your list, you send them one message. You take another 10% of your list, you send them a second message, and then you hit the remaining 80% of your list with the most successful um, subject line. 
You've also got to optimize your body text, um, and you've got to look at your images and your calls to action. So your body text, shorter copy works best in the mobile environment. People don't like scrolling through long copy on mobile devices. Your images need to be kept small, and your calls to action, they need to be prominent and easy to engage with. So those buttons need to be big and fat finger friendly. You've got to optimize your send times, and again, that means testing. You may have traditionally sent your emails um, at 11 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday or a Thursday, and this has gone on for years. People have historically always done this. Um, but now people who engage with their email inboxes um, all of the time, you need to test when the best time to send your um, campaigns are. As I say, that could be in the evening, it could be at the weekends, it could be in the late afternoon, and that really all depends on who you're targeting. And the only way to find that out is through testing. Another way um, you can look at it is um, you can look at your Google Analytics as well and see when people are engaged with your website and when that peaks perhaps that is a good time to send your campaigns out. Um, and Remember social media as well. So um, you know, don't just think about email. You've got to engage via email and social. Social is is another platform that was um, designed for the mobile environment. Um, so use social constantly to engage people, hold conversations, ask questions, and then use your email to actively sell to them. Social media isn't a great place to sell because it's a social environment. It's like selling in a bar or a cafe, nobody likes to be sold to in that environment, whereas email is very much a place of work. People use their email to um, send um, job offers, they use it to send invoices, they use it to send quotes, so it's very much a place of work and people are used to being sold to via email. So if you do just one thing today, I want you to check your current email templates and landing pages across mobile, um, across multiple mobile devices and ask, do they work? Um, but do they not only just work, do they look good? And then ask yourself, will they drive conversions in the mobile environment? If they don't, you need to reevaluate what you're doing. And certainly, if you're, if you're stuck about how you can improve this, you can contact um, us here at iContact, and we can help you redevelop um, your um, email templates so they work better in a mobile environment. So I'm sure you'll have lots of questions um, about mobile technology um, in the forthcoming year. So if you, anyone does have any questions, please don't forget to type them into um, the chat facility um, on the control panel on your screen, and we'll try our best to work through them at the end of today's session. So moving on, I'm going to be talking about content marketing. Content marketing is... Um, is my favorite thing. It's, it's essentially what I do for um, a living. Um, what is content marketing? Well, essentially, it's a low-cost uh, mechanism for delivering, um, for, for, for generating um, new leads, new subscriptions, um, and ultimately, you're building profits um, through the delivery of, of useful, engaging um, content. There's nothing new about content marketing. Content marketing has been around for as long as people have been doing business. Um, yeah, people would go to the various marketplaces and they would tell stories about how their products improved people's lives. Uh, essentially, all that's changed is the, is the mechanism for delivery. Um, content marketing now is delivered via email, it's delivered via social media, it's delivered via um, your video channels like YouTube. So we can get things out now very, very quick. So there's nothing new about content marketing, just the mechanism for delivery. Um, for Years and years, people have been saying content is king. And I remember working in the newspaper industry, you know, our editors would say content is king. I don't believe that anymore because marketing is getting more personal. Content isn't a king. A king is somebody that sits up on top of a hill and watches the battle um, below him. So I like to think of your content now in a smarter environment as a foot soldier. Your content is something that goes into battle for you and, you know, and, and fights to win new business. So don't think of it as a king that's looking down on, on, on a massive battle below. Think of it as a foot soldier. And it's also very important as well when you're, when you're doing email marketing and when you're doing social media marketing, you should never look at your lists as, as data. There are people behind these email addresses. There are people behind these um, Twitter handles. So don't think of it as numbers. Think of it as real people who may want to buy your products um, and services. I'm also a great believer that content provides a solid foundation for your entire marketing strategy. Um, 
if you produce a blog, you can um, recycle and reappropriate that to turn it into an email campaign. You can build a white paper or an ebook. You could do a webinar like this. You could speak at a real world um, a, a event. Um, it also provides a platform for you to um, embed your, your email marketing subscription forms on, your social media um, follow links on. So content marketing does provide a solid foundation for your entire marketing strategy. When I speak to people um, out on the road, I ask them, are you on social media? Everyone says yes. Are you blogging? Are you producing content? And uh, only a handful of people are actually doing that. Um, that makes me ask the question, if you're not producing your own content, what are you socializing? And I guess there's a real risk there that um, people are socializing other people's um, messages and essentially pouring fuel on other people's thought leadership. So um, start planning your own content. So content marketing will engage your target audience. I believe the best content will always solve a problem for um, a potential um, customer. And as I said at the beginning of the session, if you can solve a problem for one person, you can solve a problem for 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, depending on the size of the niche that you work in. Um, content marketing will fuel your social media and email marketing strategies. Again, um, if you're not producing your own content, what are you socializing? Um, you're either socializing other people's content and driving the business away from your business, or um, you are sharing your boring, dull, uninspiring content that will do nothing for your business. Um, content marketing will also help you build brand, generate leads, and engage more as you build your reputation and position yourself as, as a thought leader. There are many, many spokes um, in content marketing. I often refer to um, content marketing um, as a bicycle wheel. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, essentially, um, a bicycle wheel is made up of incredibly light components. Um, there was a hub in the middle, there were the various spokes, there's the rim, the tire, and the brakes. Now, take one of those individual components, and you could very easily bend or snap them. Um, there was very little strength in them, but when you combine them, they become very, very strong and actually help you become a more efficient marketeer. Um, in the recent Steve Jobs movie, um, they talked about efficiency, and they, um, the, a question was asked, what is the most efficient animal? And I believe it was a condor, but the second most efficient animal is a man with a bike. So um, yeah, when you're thinking about content marketing, think of the bicycle wheel. So at the hub of your um, content marketing strategy, you have your corporate blog. If you don't have a corporate blog, go away and build one now. And then you've got all of your various spokes. So we've got your blogged content. We've got your guest editorials. A guest editorial is essentially um, a blog post um, delivered um, via a third-party site. We've got your email marketing. We've got your online video and images, so things like YouTube videos and images on Flickr. Um, we've got your social media. We've got white papers. We've got webinars, events, and you know even Periscope is coming in there. We've got your online news releases um, and, and PR. Um, all of these are joined together um, by, by by the rim, if you like, of the, of the bicycle wheel, and. You can take any one of these things. So uh, a blog post can um, be turned into an email marketing campaign, can be turned into a white paper, can be turned um, into um, an event. And certainly um, in my history, my first book came from a blog post that I wrote on the iContact blog about um, thought leadership marketing. Um, that blog post turned into a book, and it has also turned into a series of events um, as well, which have taken me um, all around the world speaking about content marketing, email marketing, and social media marketing. So the holy trinity of content marketing, it, it might seem there's a lot of spokes there, but I believe you should start with content marketing with your um, corporate blog. This is the point where you hang all of your other content marketing spokes from. Um, then you've got your email, and then you've got your social media, and then you build. Remember, don't start with social media because um, if, you're, if you're not producing your own content, what are you socializing? So there's a lot of challenges um, in the content marketing world, and I hear these all of the time, and perhaps you can identify with some of them. People tell me they have no time. People tell me they are scared or they have a fear of pushing content out there. They tell me they have no ideas or lack of imagination. And finally, they have a lack of presentation skills. And I'm briefly going to go through each of these points and, um, and help you address them. 
If you think you have no time to dedicate to content marketing, I want you to go away and look at what you do in your working day that actually adds value to your business. Um, how much time do you spend looking at analytics on the screen, just pressing refresh, refresh, refresh? I do this every time I send an email, and it eats time. How many meetings are you going to um, that have no agenda or no purpose? You just go to meetings for the sake of meetings. There must be something you can do to free up 30 minutes time in a day to um, produce um, a, a quick blog post. Um, I always urge people to look at um, Seth Godin's blog. Um, this is Seth.com. Um, this guy is, is, a, is a content marketing genius. and. He shows you don't need too much time to invest in content marketing because some of his blog posts have a sentence or a short paragraph um, long, but what he says in that sentence or short paragraph is more than most people say in 800 words. So if you haven't got the time, take a leaf out of Seth's book and write short. Don't waste words. Fear is another issue, and a lot of people struggle with this. They fear if they put content out there via their blog or via their... Um, via their um, um, social media, that it will open them up for, for attack from, from, the, from their peers or from their um, clients who perhaps don't agree with them. Um, this isn't normally the case. Uh, if you are worried about it, just to take a look at your position. How long have you been doing the job you've been doing? doing? How well do you know your clients? How well do you know your products or your services? If you know all of these three things very, very well, you shouldn't fear anything because you really are a thought leader. If you've got no ideas or lack of imagination, this is quite frankly a lazy excuse. Um, best thing to do is pick up the phone and speak to a trusted client. Ask them what makes their life difficult, what makes it hard for them to get out of bed on a Monday morning, and they will give you a list of 10 items. If you can solve just one of those problems for that client, you've solved the problem for that 10, 100, those 1,000 clients, depending on the size of your niche. And then finally, lack of presentation skills. Um, you know, especially if you're a one-man band, you might not have access um, to, to designers. Um, but that shouldn't present a problem because there are plenty of resources um, online where you can find freelance help, which can be very, very um, affordable. And you know, certainly even people in my position, people who write on a daily basis, um, who've published books, you know, we don't do things single-handedly. Uh, I very rarely publish anything that hasn't been through um, uh, the editorial process because once an editor and a designer has gone through it, it will always um, be better. So don't let your lack of presentation skills stop you. Um, go online and look for freelance resources, and you, you may be surprised um, how affordable um, that is. Some um, very quick content marketing stats um, that I'll run through. 42% of marketers publish new content daily or multiple times a week. I believe um, you need to do this because content marketing gives your business a pulse. There are thousands and thousands of websites out there that um, uh, remain static and don't look like they've been um, you know, updated in, in months or sometimes even years. If you have a blog and you're updating content on a daily or a weekly basis, people will still see you still care about your business. 54% of marketers find creating engaging content challenging. Yes, it can be difficult, um, but remember, focus on your customers' problems, and if you can um, solve those problems, you should find it easier to produce um, content. 55% of marketeers will increase their content marketing budget this year. Now, the great thing about content marketing is if you have budget, um, that's great. You can spend more money on, on hiring in writers or hiring in designers. If you don't have budget, content marketing can actually be free. Now, this is really um, useful if you are perhaps um, time, time rich and cash poor. You, know, you should definitely be able to find time to, to write those blog posts and distribute them via your corporate blog and via your social um, media. So invest more time and effort in putting that content out there, and then the leads will come directly um, to you. 84% of marketers say um, brand awareness is the most important content marketing goal, but I'm here to tell you it um, will also drive subscriptions and it will also drive sales. Um, perhaps in recent years, the, the most important um, content marketing platform, particularly for B2B marketers, is LinkedIn. If I worked in the trade press, I would be very worried about LinkedIn. LinkedIn now has a blogging platform. 
Um, it um, has recruitment advertising, obviously, and it has a community um, of people. And again, it is a free resource, so um, you can distribute your content to a very, very targeted audience via LinkedIn. So, quick content marketing checklist. Um, first things first, perform a content marketing audit. What do I mean by that? Um, essentially, I want you to go away. I want you to look at existing content marketing assets you might have, um, blog posts, white papers, brochures, etc., etc. Also, look at who in your organization can help you produce content, um, what partners can help you produce content, what um, clients out there can help you um, yeah, produce testimonials and things like that. So, produce a short content marketing um, audit and look at any gaps that you might have and how you will fill them. Set your objectives. Um, if you don't set objectives, how will you know you've been successful? Um, I should say here as well, I'm not a great believer in long-term planning. Your plan should be no longer than a single sheet of, of, of paper. If your plan runs over to multiple sheets of paper, you become a planner and not a doer. And um, if you um, put a lot of effort into the, into, into the planning up front and it doesn't work, you, know, you may find yourself um, in trouble. Launch your initial channels, um, that's your blog, your email and social media um, in that order and then build. And the most important thing is, is stop talking about it and start doing. I meet people all of the time who tell me email marketing's on the list, social media marketing's on the list, content marketing's on the list and they sit around tables and they talk about it and they talk about it and they talk about it but nothing gets done. It's very, very simple to yeah, publish a blog post. So if you have a problem to solve, stop talking about it, write that blog post and get it out there and it will start working for you today. You're looking for content marketing inspiration? Um, there are three places um, I look. Um, the first company is Red Bull and um, you may remember a couple of years ago there was an Austrian gentleman called Felix who um, went up to the stratosphere, the verge of outer space in a hot air balloon and parachuted back down um, to Earth. This was an amazing content marketing story. Um, the build-up to this event was over approximately two years. It was covered by um, the major newspapers, it was covered by the tabloids, it was covered by television news, and every time it was mentioned, it was referred to as a Red Bull event. Certainly in the UK, where I'm based, this um, received a lot of coverage on the BBC, and in the UK, you cannot buy advertising on the BBC. So for Red Bull to get their brand on, major news on a major news network like the BBC, was a huge um, coup. It was also broadcast um, to approximately 8 million people or on YouTube um, and covered on I think 140 other digital channels. Um, why did they do this? Um, they wanted to sell more of their energy drinks. It's a very, very competitive market and doing stunts like this helps keep their brand um, up above the, the competition. The downside of this for perhaps many people on the phone today is um, the budget for, for this event was approximately 30 to 50 million dollars. Um, I'm guessing most people on the phone don't have 30 to um, 50 million dollars to spend on content marketing. This is actually quite a small, um, small cut from Red Bull's entire content marketing strategy. They, they also support or sponsor you know, Formula One, they also sponsor um, you know, snowboarding events, highboard diving, etc., etc. Um, it's reckoned they spend upwards of 500 million um, a year. But the good news is content marketing can actually be free, which is um, indicated by my next example, the Ice Bucket Challenge, which was raising money for the ALS um, charity. This came out of nowhere um, and went viral. Um, I know um, in my household, my 10-year-old daughter was desperate to get a nomination so she could stand in the back garden and pour a bucket of ice cold water over her head. Now, apparently, only one in 10 people who took part in the Ice Bucket Challenge actually donated to the cause, but it raised so much money, the charity didn't actually know what they were going to do with it. Another great example of content marketing is, is Star Wars. Um, I'm sure you've all been to um, your local cinema to see the latest um, episode of Star Wars. Um, yeah, but is it a film or is it a piece of content marketing? I, I would like to argue it's a piece of content marketing. Um, when Star Wars first came out in, in 1977, uh, off the back of that first film, they sold 24 million action figures in that first year. The Star Wars franchise has generated $32 billion of revenue from, um, from toys and, and, and licensing compared to the $4.5 billion at the box office. So 
is it a piece of entertainment or is it a mechanism for driving sales of, of toys and lunch boxes and McDonald's happy meals? I don't know. But I think you could probably look at a lot of these um, films today and think, well, is, is, is this a piece of content marketing or, or, or is it a film? So content marketing, if you do just one more thing today on top of what we're doing with mobile, um, I want you to ask a client what makes business life difficult and write and share a blog post outlining solutions. Don't just post it to your, um, your corporate blog, um, also post it to LinkedIn, um, send it out via social media, et cetera, et cetera, and see if it drives traffic um, into, um, in, into your site. So we're going to move on to uh, marketing automation. As I say, here at iContact, we are very, very excited um, about marketing automation with the launch of our new product, iContact um, Pro. Um, what is marketing automation? Well, we like to think of it as a smarter way of marketing. It helps the marketeer build a, a more personal and, and cohesive strategy uh, by combining the power of, of email, social media, content, your customer relationship management, and, and data. Essentially, it delivers the right message at the right time to the right person based on a number of rules, um, such as um, previous engagements with emails, um, lead scoring, so for example, um, you're targeting people by their domain name or their job title or the company that they work for. So it's all about delivering the right message at the right time um, to the right um, person. Marketing automation used to be very, very expensive, uh, and it was also resource heavy as well. You, it was beyond you know, the skill set of, of many, many marketeers, and as a result, it was only available to organizations with large marketing budgets who could afford to hire the specialists to manage the campaigns through their marketing automation systems. Um, we have changed that at eye contact. As with all our tools, they are designed to be used by um, the marketeer and not um, a specialist. So it doesn't matter um, whether you are a one man band or a, a small marketing department, um, you know, you um, can have access to iContact Pro, um, which is very, very cost effective, and you can start sending your first campaigns you know, within, um, within hours of, of setting um, up on the system. So um, some stats that I want to share about uh, marketing automation. Marketing automation um, increases um, the B2B sales pipeline contributions by an average of 10%. That is because you're sending the right message to the right person at the right time based on previous engagements. You're essentially cutting out the tire kickers and, you know, and targeting people um, you know, very, very specifically. Nurtured leads also produce a 20% increase in sales opportunities. So it's not a case of just sending one email um, once, um, you know, once a week or once a month. It's about sending you know, useful, engaging emails that you know, constantly appear in your subscribers' inboxes and, and nurturing them with you know, great content that drives people down um, into that sales um, funnel. So today, uh, marketing automation drives a 14.5% increase in sales productivity. It also drives a 12.2% reduction in marketing overhead. It's not just about making more money for you, it's about saving money for you. Now, as I mentioned, marketing automation used to be very, very expensive and resource heavy. Despite this, 75% of companies using marketing automation see an ROI in just 12 months. As I say, we have disrupted the market and we have delivered a cost-effective, powerful tool that um, people from small and medium-sized businesses can now have access to. And you too can be seeing um, this um, return on investment in a short period of time. So three marketing automation opportunities that I want you to look at in 2016. First is your workflow automation. Now this is um, essentially like an autoresponder on, on steroids. It just does so much more. You can build a, um, a series of campaigns that hit your subscribers based on their previous engagements. So if somebody's opened an email, they will get um, a, a, a different email to somebody who perhaps hasn't opened an email. If somebody's clicked on a link, they will get another email. If somebody has visited your website and visited a specific product, they will be taken um, down another route. So it's sending very targeted campaigns, very engaging campaigns, very relevant campaigns. The second point is lead scoring. 
And lead scoring looks at your subscribers, looks at the leads that your campaigns are generating, and it will score them based on your own criteria. So perhaps that will be um, the, the domain name or the company name or the job title or the income or the geography, um, and it will give each lead a score. That way you can target your hottest prospects and leave your know, colder prospects um, you have to be nurtured further by your workflow automation programs and your marketing um, your other marketing automation programs so when it comes to picking up the phone and speaking to that client, you're only speaking to the hottest prospects. Finally, you've got your CRM integration. So iContact Pro um, integrates with Salesforce.com, um, and this means that your entire organization has access to your marketing data. So it's not um, held in the marketing department anymore. It is... Um, it's available to your sales team, it's available to your customer support team, et cetera, et cetera. So if somebody wants to see, if somebody's engaged with a previous campaign, perhaps downloaded a white paper, um, perhaps visited a video or visited a webinar, they can see from within your CRM um, system. I'd like to give you a, a very brief warning. Marketing automation isn't a silver bullet. Marketing automation will target the right people at the right time. Um, but you need to make an upfront investment um, in content and, and in campaigns and um, obviously you need to look at your data as well and taking the time to study your subscriber data will definitely help you become smarter. If you want to learn more uh, about um, Eye Contact Pro and marketing automation, we do have a free 30-day trial of the service which is available via our website eyecontact.com forward slash pro. Check us out and um, have a look at the system. It is very easy to use out of the system and of course um, our support team are always on hand to help you out if there is anything you don't um, fully understand. So just one last thing that I want you to do today. Um, in connection with marketing automation. Stop thinking about campaigns as standalone items um, and plan a simple series of email sends based on engagement. So if people have opened an email, if people have clicked on a link. So don't think of campaigns as a one-off. Think of them as a conversation that goes on down the line and takes people down into your sales funnel. One last thought before we move on to um, the um, Q&A at the end of today's session. Um, we talked about this at the beginning of the session. Marketing is going to get noisier and it's going to get more disruptive. So you really need to keep your eye on the ball and try and be the disruptive force rather than the disrupted force. Now you may be worried about this. You may be worried that technology is going to come along and impact um, in your business. Um, you may not um, have the know-how or the skill set or the, the budget um, to protect yourself um, from mobile apps. Um, but you ca do have the power to be the best um, that you possibly can. As I mentioned, the newspaper industry has been disrupted, the travel industry has been disrupted, and even the taxi business has been disrupted by technology. That doesn't mean that all newspapers will go out of business, or all travel companies will go out of business, or all taxi companies will go out of business. The very best that focus on delivering the right solutions to their customers will survive, and I think they will also thrive. So with that, I would like to thank you all very much for joining me on today's session and we're going to open the lines up to Q&A. So if you do have any questions, um, please um, feel free to um, enter them into the chat box and I will try my best um, to answer them for you today. Um, if I can't get to them today, we can... Um, we'll also be publishing a blog post on the iContact blog in the, in the coming weeks where I'll address any other questions that I've not been able to get to today. So if you give me just two seconds, I will just wait for the questions to, to drop into the inbox. Okay, so I'm worried that emails aren't effective anymore. I know I spent my day deleting or unsubscribing from mailing lists. What's your views on emails via services like Facebook and other sources? Well, as I mentioned already, um, email still delivers the highest return on investment than any other form of marketing. Um, and that could be paid search, it could be SEO, it could be newspaper or print advertising, television advertising, radio advertising. So email marketing is still very effective and we are certainly seeing people investing more money into email marketing. 
as we mentioned though, it is getting noisier. So um, you know, you make you need to make sure that you are delivering the right message to the right person at the right time. Um, keep your messages on track and keep them targeted, and they will work from you. Um, if a message or a campaign is truly useful, your subscriber will not um, unsubscribe. Okay, um, how do we keep um, email addresses um, lists clean? Um, essentially, you need to you need to look at at, at your bounce rates, um, you know, and and, and your and your um, engagement rates. If emails um, are not um, engaged um, after after say a six month period or a twelve month period, you need to try and re-engage them. Now that might mean um, a special offer, um, or it might mean um, you know, picking up the phone and actually actually speaking to them and, and perhaps offering them something um, else. If after that process um, your emails are, are still not engaged, you know you may as well call them because um, it's clear that um, your subscriber is no longer interested in your product or service and concentrate on the people um, who are interested. Um, again, if you um, are struggling with this, you can speak to our, um, our customer services team and they will help you um, your cleanse, um, cleanse your lists. Um, I should also say as well, if you're not taking the time to cleanse your lists as well, you um, may receive a lot of bounced email, um, emails and um, most email marketing service providers, including iContact, use bounce rates to identify spammers so it can affect your deliverability if you're not keeping your lists clean. Um, if people are no longer engaged with you, there's no point in paying to send emails to them because um, yeah, it won't be doing you any good. Where does one find industry-specific um, benchmarks for email marketing return on investment? Um, I don't really like benchmarks. Um, the, 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 the figure I gave you earlier was from the Direct Marketing Association, but if you look online, um, you will find um, benchmarks for all sorts of things like um, ROI, open rates, click-through rates by specific industry. Um, the problem with this is you're comparing yourself to people who may or may not be following best practice. The only person you should be comparing yourself to is yourself, and that's why testing is so important. Um, it, 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 it's so important. Um, so, you know, if you're coming to getting a 20% open rate and a 20% ROI, you need to be um, looking at um, your, your, you need to be looking at everything and driving um, driving that forward. Now, as I say, the um, ROI that we see um, from the Direct Marketing Association is 44 um, to one. I know people who make a lot more than that. I also um, know people who make a lot less than that. Um, as well, and that really depends on on, on how they're following um, best practices. Um, what was the name of the person that the speaker referred to as a content marketing genius? Yeah, that that's Seth Godin. So it's S E T H G O D I N. Seth um, is a marketing genius. He, he's written about 17 books. You may recognise his name from titles like Purple Cow or um, Tribes or Marketeers. Um, a liars. Um, you know, he has some very, very good ideas, and as I say, he doesn't waste words. He gets straight to um, the point um, and, and, and delivers great, actionable content. How often should I blog, and where do you find blog ideas? Well, I like to blog every single day, but I'm in a, um, a lucky position. That is my job. That is what I do. I think um, for a small, medium-sized business, you should be looking to blog multiple times a week. If you can do two or three blog posts um, a week, you know, that will stand you in really good stead because, as I say, a blog gives your business a pulse. It doesn't matter if perhaps your website looks a little bit dated as long as your blog post is um, is updated um, re regularly. It gives your business a pulse. And where do you find blogging ideas? Well, I get most of my blogging ideas from events like this, um, speaking to, to marketeers like yourselves um, on, on webinars and, and events. Um, it's very easy when you work in um, the digital marketing community to, to lock yourself into your cubicle and never meet real people. So I make an effort to go out um, a couple of times a month and, and speak to marketeers um, around the UK and Europe where, where I'm based and I ask them what um, what their problems are and, and I solve problems and I've had all sorts of pro um, questions asked to me, things like how do you sell chicken nuggets via email and if you want to know how to sell chicken nuggets via email, do a quick search on the iContact blog and I'll help you out. What is Meerkat? Meerkat is um, 
um, a system very much like like um, like Periscope. Um, it was actually the first um, to market. Um, Periscope has perhaps taken market share from Meerkat um, because they're obviously owned owned by Twitter. So, um, uh, but essentially, Meerkat is a technology um, to allow you to um, broadcast directly from um, your mobile um, phones. Um, let me just work through these. If only 5 to 6% of our site traffic is from mobile, phones and tablets combined, do we really need to create a mobile-ready site? Um, that's an interesting point. Um, I would suggest it really depends on, on the kind of business you're in and, 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 and the people um, you are targeting. I would suggest you keep a very, very close eye on, on that traffic um, because it will, um, it will rise. Now, perhaps people aren't visiting um, you on mobile devices because they've been on there before and they, they found it doesn't work. Um, so um, perhaps if you did build a mobile site, yeah, perhaps um, those, that, those percentages would um, yeah, become a, a, a lot bigger. But again, if we look at the stats there, 66% of email is opened first on a mobile device. If you um, aren't able to take those people to um, a, um, a mobile-friendly site, um, yeah, you will ultimately um, lose them. And you know, that desktop, the desktop environment is becoming smaller and smaller every year. Do you believe that survey? Do you feel that surveys are a good way to connect with mobile e email marketing? I think surveys um, have their place. Um, you know, it's always a great way to ask your clients, um, you know, what they think of your product or your service, or what they think of the wider um, ma uh, market. Um, problem with surveys is um, the response rate can be very, very low. But um, you know, any input you can get from your subscribers um, should always be, you know, is always valuable. Quickly define content. So content um, is the, um, oh, that's a good question. Quickly define content. So content can be anything. It can be, uh, it can be a written post. It can be an article. It could be um, a, a photo. It could be uh, an infographic. It could be an event. Um, it's you know, just a, a mechanism for, for, sharing, for sharing an idea. Um, I tend to focus on, on, on blogging first and foremost. Um, but you know, it could be uh, it could be a white paper, it could be an ebook, it could be um, a, a PowerPoint presentation, it could be a brochure, it could be any one of a hundred things. Um, I tend to focus on, on on content for blog posts, social media posts, and, and email um, first and foremost. Though. Okay, can you address businesses that are spiritually oriented? You talk a lot about corporate. Um, you know, is there a different approach? You know, I'm a great believer that whether you are um, a massive corporation, a small mom and pop shop, um, uh, a charitable organisation, a non-profit organisation, a club, a church, you know, it's all about the same thing. It's about solving problems. Now, that problem might be how to um, how a product or service can make somebody's life better, but it may also be about how your club or your organization or your church can make somebody's um, life better. As I mentioned earlier, um, I um, spoke with a lady who ran a charity for homeless people in the north of England. And um, yes, part of their strategy was um, driving um, donations, but the other part of their strategy was also you know, communicating with the audience of people they, they were trying to, um, to help. The golden rule is you should always be useful. You should always strive to solve problems. Um, if you're not useful, if you're not solving problems, um, you know, your marketing will be very, very ineffective. So I don't think it makes a difference whether you're a huge corporation or whether you're a non-profit or a charity or a club or a church. It's all about solving problems. Okay. So with that, um, I think I would like to bring today's session to an end. As I say, if anybody has any other questions, please feel free to um, drop me an email, jhayes at icontact.com, or you can connect with me on Twitter at john underscore w underscore Hayes. Um, I will be trying my best to um, answer all of these questions and more um, in the coming weeks on a blog post on the iContact blog, so keep your eye out there. We'll also be delivering um, a recording of this session to you in the next two or three days. So with that, I would like to thank everybody for joining me today and wish you a pleasant day. Thank you very much. Goodbye.